Okay, this is a video where we're making this uh, kid's climbing rock uh, and the log pole that supports the net in between the two. So i uh, going to start out with this drawing that they had on the installation guide. I just had it enlarged as a pattern for me to uh, work from. It's uh, six foot wide, eight foot long, and the rock's going to be almost eight foot tall. So stick with us. We'll show you how to do this. Okay, so we're, we've got the template down. We're making a cardboard L. Jim, go ahead and put that on. This is our 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 bottom plate. We're going to make some studs. We use the uh, cardboard L's, and we'll come in here and build the rock up, screwing studs to this bottom plate, making a top plate. But you're going to see us make this as a nine foot by seven to six foot, and it's going to be almost eight foot tall. But we're going to frame it using these cardboard L's. They sell these, or they give these away at the appliance centers. They they put them on the corners of uh, appliance to protect them like the stoves and the dishwashers and the refrigerators so they don't get broke or dented. We use them to build frames with, and there's a lot of videos on my channel you could see wherein we have this. So now, okay, so obviously this is not a straight line. This is a straight piece. So what I've done is I've marked every corner and I came in here and all I did was simply cut these on the saw to where it came in on the bottom and just cut that. And you can see they're all flippity floppity now. Okay, so in order to seam, these are two different plates, and we're trying to unify them together. I've cut this extra plate piece. We seam that together. Right now, Jim's going to set some screws in that. We're going to turn it over and screw it up from the bottom, cutting off the extra screws, and then we've got one here that joins that together. That is how we've made all of these seams and joints consistently back together, and they're stronger than before we cut them. We're getting ready to cut this one and then turn it this way, and again, we're just going to go around this whole thing until we get back to there. We've got our plate. Now we can start with the studs to make the actual vertical walls of this rock. But uh, All right, guys, so we got the bottom plate all made. We've just got to flip it over for this little section right here where we've got screws in. We actually come up from the screws in the bottom, take these screws off, and then grind off the screws that come up so we don't hurt ourselves. But right now, bottom plate is pretty much finished other than what I just said, and then we're going to stick it in, and we're going to start making studs now. Okay, so you guys would have last saw where I had the plate done on the table, and now it's still back on the table, but we've added studs. This back area gets up, and then it cantilevers out, way out towards me. So you can see the C where I put cantilever side. This side is stepped for the children to get up, and we've started making the steps as high up as we could really, uh, do without getting on that little ladder. But right now, we're just at the point where you can reach about up here, and then we're going to drop it down onto this lower platform, which is designed to actually mud it on. So you can roll it out, wash it, grind it, roll it back in, mud it, that type of a thing. But we're going to drop this here in a moment down to this, which gives us a little less height. And we can work that up. And then finally, we're going to drop it on the ground to finish it because uh, we'll still be on the step ladder, a uh, little step ladder here. But right now, this whole side, which is what I call the step side, is beginning to emerge. There's a, the lowest step right here because this is all sheer here goes up and then it cantilevers. This is the first step, second, and there's a couple of other access points they let you have or they want you to have. And I'm just mimicking what play, uh, Ultra Play has done. So these are the steps coming up. All right, this thing is strong right now. And it's not even complete. Jim, let's just lift it straight up in the air and you can see it stays horizontal. It's, it's a well-supported foundation. I'm just gonna, oh, what are my screws? Okay, so again, just, Literally, I don't even care about the things. It's not going to break. It is one soft little cookie. Now, I got this drawn out on here. Not that I need it. It's more for when I mud. But this is designed to let us mud the unit. And I can mud it on the ground, but I want to mud it to where I can roll it out to wash it down in between coats. I can do grinding, roll it in, roll it out. So stick with me, guys. We're going to get the rest of the frame built, and then we'll start sheeting with cardboard. Okay, we're just starting to sheet this with open face cardboard, and we use uh, inch and a half uh, drywall screws. The coarse is the best one to use, coarse screws. Okay, so we got all the sheeting done, and uh, just going to seal it with uh, acryl before I go up for the day. And it's acrylic glue carried in water. It's a waterborne, like a bonding agent or an admixture, same thing. And... Uh, It'll stop the cardboard from getting wet. And um, again, this area here is a utility area. This is where the net, the climbing net attaches to the actual rock. And they want it flat in here, this, this 90 degree area here. But everything else, this is their design. And it's, it's exacting to the, uh, the uh, pictures and images that we had. So dimensionally and shape-wise, we're going to continue to make it look, 
you know, like it's supposed to. But right now, I just got to seal it and then uh, going to do a little taping here and there. I'm seeing a little area right there. Mud could get in, you know, but that's after the sealer's dry. So Monday, because it's Saturday right now and we're all done for the day. So just showing you the rock all finished up. All right, you guys have a great one. Okay, we've got this up in the air. It's totally level this way and this way. We've rigged it and we know where the pickup points are in cardboard. It's gonna be the same pickup points when we weighed it with the cement. So what we're trying to do now is we're going to mud this first. We're gonna put the straps where they are corresponding to where they are now. We're gonna mark that on here, put the straps on, lay a piece of plastic over it, mud the bottom, set this in there. And we know that when we pick it up, it will be rigged correctly. It took us three attempts to get that positioning to where it lifted up straight. So stick with us. All right, sir. Okay, you can see that we've uh, actually moved away from mudding it on that stand. We're actually gonna put the plastics on the floor right now. We're lifting this up. I'm just trying this as a test because once we mud the plastic, we had to pick up the cardboard and set it in there. So I came up with this jig that allowed us to be able to pick it up horizontally level and set it in the mud. Now, keep in mind that the straps are going to be uh, covered with some plastic and right below the surface of our mud. So that's going to allow us an ability to incorporate the uh, straps in where they should be. And when I ship it, I'll be leaving the straps there so they can pick it up and take it out of the crate. So stick with us now. We're going to start mudding the bottom here. Okay, first things first is we drew the outer shape of the boulder onto the plastic. You can see the black line uh, around. That's how we know where to stop mudding. Jim is starting to mud over the uh, strap that has plastic over it. The strap that's closest to me also has plastic. This allows the strap not to be caught up in the mud. Um, what we're going to do right now is he's just covering the first one. We're going to cover the second one. Then we're going to start laying our mud our mesh, our mud, our mesh, our mud. So we're going to have two layers of mesh, three layers of mud. It should be three quarters of an inch thick, and then we'll set the cardboard it rock into that mud. Actually, I'm surprised we didn't go over that much. That looks pretty good, Jim. Now, um, like I say, let's do a little wiggle. Oh, you know what? It ain't wiggling much on my end. There we go. Now I'm seeing my mesh starting to move you. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. So. Now, Okay, in this clip, we've obviously got the cardboard rock sitting on top of the mud. We left the mesh that was incorporated in the underneath mud to stick out about a foot, and we're just now mudding that up on the side to uh, continue the mesh up, and we'll start mudding this whole rock with a layer of mud, mesh, layer of mud, mesh, layer of mud, and that'll give us a three-quarter inch uh, lay of mud and two layers of mesh. Stick with me. I'll show you some more. Okay, so the first coat is all complete. Yesterday, we only got the bottom, which is, we made one batch more yesterday than we did today. So just the base, because it was an inch, it was layers of mesh, mud, mesh, mud. And then this is just one layer coming up. This all remaining is one layer coming up. But this mud was one batch less than this. We did, we got it done a lot quicker too. Well, mud time was about the same, but anyway, it's totally mudded first coat. And then from there, we gotta do three more coats and then texture coat and then stain it and seal it and get it on out of here. So stick with me guys. Okay, so yesterday we had covered that with one coat. We had done the bottom the day before and up about this far uh, along the whole base. And then yesterday, as I said, we just coated it first time with the mesh. Today, we were able to do it twice with the mesh and we we're standing on the rock. So it is pretty dang gone strong. Now tomorrow we're putting another quarter inch coat on 
And then from there, a little styrofoam. Actually, I'm going to do a little styrofoam mud for effect because it's really not looking good as far as rock. I'm going to make some styrofoam mud pop out definition. Then we're going to put some uh, fiber mud over that and then some texture mud over that. So, Okay, in this clip, you can see we've come a long ways with the styrofoam mud. I'm actually throwing the lightweight styrofoam on now. For bulk building out definition, this is the key to doing so you don't have a bunch of extra weight. But uh, you can see the before and after here in a second. Okay, in this clip, you can see on the left, that's the rock before I added the foam mud, which is on the right. And now that the foam mud's added, I'm going to start the texture mix on top of that. But uh, stick with me. Okay, so I got done with the texture last night, came in this morning with this little sanding disc just to knock down any pieces of sand or cement that were sticking out like little sharp chunks. And then I washed it all down. I'm getting ready to spray it with the uh, a glue and then I'm gonna hydro seal it twice and then uh, staining it later this afternoon, creating it tomorrow. And I still got this tonight. I gotta do this uh, tree. I gotta take this out of here. I casted it. It's a six foot, well, 75, 75 inches for the tree trunk that holds the net. You can see the attachment points right here for the net once it's vertical. This goes in the foundation. And then on the rock, we had two attachment points. So that you can put the net across here and uh, kids can have fun. But uh, gonna get this thing uh, getting out of here. Uh, we have another one to make just like it, exactly the same. It's going to be made with styrofoam instead of uh, cardboard because I had two of them. I thought I'd make one with cardboard for you guys and then one we're just going to carve out of styrofoam and it'll take uh, a lot less time, I think, but it's always more expensive. So stick with me. Okay, so we started out with the orange speckles. And then we went to the green, army green speckles, the tan, and then gray speckles, white speckles, and black speckles. Now there's still some of the gray cement colors still peering through. That makes our seventh color, if you want to count it as a color. But that's a, a finalized thing. Now I did take and take some the orange and the black and dilute it down where that's given us our randomization, which you kind of put on just before I did the white. The two whites, white, white, and a tan white, and then the black. Those are the last colors I just put on. Stick with me, we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna seal it. Rock is all done, stained and sealed. I'm just getting ready to make the crate for it. You really can't see the color, but it looks nice. And the tree trunk's over there. And also 